Welcome to Home and Unleashed, a podcast about coming home to ourselves, featuring conversations with special guests on topics related, but not limited to burnout, mindset, fulfillment, transitions, wellness, and so much more. I am your host, Jessica Locke, Astrala Yoga Guide and Holistic Wellness Coach. And this podcast is not about telling you what to do. I believe we all have the answers we need within. This podcast is here to inspire you, help you find clarity, and maybe give you an extra nudge towards living wholeheartedly. And of course, we'll be sharing tools and strategies from our guests to embrace your inner wisdom and live unleashed. Ready to dive in? Today's special guest is a social media expert. Her name is Mallory Hank Johnson, also known as MJ. MJ talks about her relationship with social media, how it helped her connect and find her community during a very difficult time in her life, such as coping with infertility struggles, and how that helped her connect to herself eventually, leading her to transition from a great but unsatisfying 9 to 5 job to full-time entrepreneurship doing what she loves. MJ is a proud curly hair millennial mother and military wife who operates the lifestyle brand Life by MJ. As an influencer and blogger, MJ has completed over 100 brand collaborations with notable brands such as Coca-Cola, Costco, and Oreo, all while sharing her musings on motherhood, fashion, beauty, and other lifestyle topics. MJ is also passionate about social media and helping others achieve their dreams. On her podcast, A Life by You, she shares how to harness the power of social media to create a life on your own terms. MJ has also extended her support with coaching, e-course programs, as well as a done-for-you social media services, all developed and intended to be sustainable social media strategy solutions to help impactful to help create impactful content on your own terms. In today's episode, Mallory shares what led her to walk away from her six-figure job in pursuit of something more aligned, how that journey was for her, from her struggles to breakthroughs, and then we also talk about what happens after you make the leap. We often hear about people quitting their jobs, and it's all amazing, but sometimes things can get worse before they get better. How do you regulate your nervous system after such a big change? Our bodies? Well, they reacted, and we share a little bit about our experience and what we needed to do to allow ourselves to recalibrate. We also talk about how we often override our inner knowing based on a false sense of security. I mean, I'm pretty sure we've all done that before. And Mallory shares how you can leverage social media to your advantage with practical tips to get started and the importance of choosing a platform that's also fun for you. Come join our chat. Hi, Mallory. Welcome. Thank you so much for joining me today. How are you? I'm awesome. Thank you so much for just having me, Jessica, and uh, sharing your platform and um, allowing me just to 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 chat with you today. It's awesome to, to be able to do this. I adore you. So I'm excited. Likewise. So I've met Mallory almost like a year ago and I've been kind of just watching her. We were in a program together in a very similar journey where we were kind of transitioning and figuring out what the next steps are. So before we get super deep, <laughs> Mallory, would you like to introduce yourself to the audience? I know you also go by MJ, and I believe there's a story behind it. So if you want to yeah. share that too, please. <laughs> Absolutely. I'll, I'll give you guys like the thousand foot level Cliff Notes version, <laughs> if that makes <laughs> sense. But um, my name is Mallory Hank Johnson, but on the internet, I'm known as MJ because Mallory Hank Johnson is way too long for the internet. Um, and I was one of those women who hyphenated their names because I loved my last name. Yeah. <laughs> but I, also loved my, yeah. I love my husband and I, I love that I was able to share in that, but it made it really complicated just to be honest with you guys <laughs> in hindsight. <laughs> but um you know, to, to kind of talk about my own journey and how I got started. Um, 
in having working in social media and now having an online business. Um, I was a project manager for a number of years. I've worn lots of hat over the years, but the last place I landed in corporate America, I was a project manager certified and um, really happy at my job for a very long time. Um, however, I always felt this inkling of like, there's something more, there's something else that I'm meant to be doing. Um, simultaneously, I started, uh, my husband and I were attempting to um, get pregnant and have a child. And we started having fertility issue. We, we start embarked on an infertility journey um, without even knowing it. And that was very challenging, super challenging. And I needed an outlet. I feel like there was nothing I could control. Like my body wasn't doing the things it was so, quote unquote supposed to do as a woman. Um, so I, I felt like I needed to control something. And so I started expressing myself on social media and I bought a camera, I got a DSLR. And it was the biggest investment I made into myself since college and buying a house. Um, and at the time it was like around seven, $800. Cause so I was like, I gotta get a good lens and all this other stuff. But it really was profound and changed everything for me buying this camera and starting to take pictures of myself <laughs> um, and, and just expressing myself visually and then verbally um, launching my blog, Life by MJ. And over time I started um, connecting with this incredible community um, as I shared my infertility journey. And I mean, I felt so seen and I felt so nurtured and loved by like-minded individuals. Um, fast forward, uh, I started building a following really quickly, actually, it was by surprise. And um, I really started taking this internet, social media thing seriously. <laughs> and I started pitching myself to brands. Um, and within a year after buying that camera, I was launching my web, my, my blog, um, I um, had made $10,000. Like, so that seven, $800 investment was more than paid for. And I was like, something's here, you know, like something's happening. <laughs> like, whoa, I just made like an extra 10 grand. Like I wasn't even trying. I mean, I was trying, let me, let me, but I wasn't very intentional. Um, if I'm being, if I'm being honest, um, there were some things there re starting to peak, but I honestly didn't know exactly what I was doing. And, um, I had my daughter and that was amazing. And that really shifted things for me. Like, okay, that, that really made me start taking inventory in terms of my role as a project manager. And then also, um, working in social social media, like which direction did I, you know, really want to go? And so I decided I, I really wanted to see where this social media um, online business could go. And I started coaching people, started char charging dirt cheap to, to coach people on how I got to where I was at working with brands. Didn't know what the hell I was doing. My first e-course launch, um, it wasn't a bomb, but... <laughs> <laughs> it did not do, do all the grand and overture, like, oh my God, I'm making 10, you know, five figures or um, right. six figures from this launch. It was like, oh, like I got to figure this out. Like this isn't, this isn't going as perfectly as I <laughs> thought it was going to be, but something was still there for me. Like I knew this was, um, a journey I needed to embark on because I, again, I knew something, there was something more for me, um, as a woman of color, I really wanted to build generational wealth for my family. And while working with brands was really exciting and fun, I, I worked with Coca-Cola, Oreo, Costco, Target, like the names just kept coming in. It was just, I, I was attracting this. I felt, I felt compelled to serve people like me. You know, it was great to serve these big brands, but I really wanted to serve people like myself, like who didn't have a clue what the hell they were doing. Long story short now, um, fast forward, I've now since left, left my job. I've built um, some pretty exciting programs that I, I absolutely love. I have some other great things in the pipeline that I'm excited to, excited to do. But um, had I not put myself out there and just kind of started dipping my toe and, and playing and experimenting and failing. And so, you know, in a lot of different ways, um, I wouldn't be here now doing this 100%. And the, while I talk so much about social media and Instagram and things like that, um, I really, going back to that generational wealth piece, 
um, I really want to help others claim that, you know, whether that's through, you know, using social media as a tool or just them finding their voice as a tool to get there, if that makes sense. Cause I really feel we can help women of color. Everyone succeeds like women of color are the lowest paid and, you know, we make the lowest in wages. And so if we can uplift the lowest, everyone's yeah. just going to keep going up, you know? So, um, that's, that's the place where I am right now. I still work with brands. I love working with brands. It, it's something I love that creative, I have a marketing degree. So I love that piece of it. Um, but I also love coaching and mentoring. I really feel like it's more of a mentorship that I have with mm -hmm. my, my clients, but that's where I am now. And it's still being written, you know, wow. <laughs> still figuring I, it out as well, but I love where I'm at, to be honest. <laughs> I am so proud of where you're at. Oh, I'm, I can't you. even say proud, but like just seeing your growth, because I know how much courage it took to fully leave from the nine to five. And I also wanted to point out how you had an inkling and then you were facing a challenge and that challenge as a way to kind of self-soothe and like process mm. that challenge, it opened the doors for you to find something kind of like a higher purpose. I don't know if that's the mm. right way to say it, but it oh, yeah, girl. opened more doors. Yeah. That's exactly what it was. And that's what I'm finding. I tell people, I was like, I had no idea entrepreneurship would be a journey of self-awareness. Like <laughs> there's so many things that just continue to evolve and be unlocked and shifted. And I'm like, I went into this originally to make money. I had no right? idea. <laughs> yeah. I had no idea that this was going to be a soul journey. <laughs> like, oh and honestly, <laughs> that's been so much more fulfilling than the money piece. Like I, I feel, I feel that money is an energy and my money mindset, I'm still working on, um, so Same much, <laughs> but, um, I feel like I have a healthier relationship with money and that if I continue to act from a place of value and serving and community, the money will come, you know? And certainly there's those, like, those moments where that scarcity sets in like, uh, I need to make some money, <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? But, but at the same time, like there's still this piece of me where it's just like, okay, no, you can do this. You can create it. You can, um, it, it's this level, it's a different level of confidence um, that you can stand on your own two feet and not only help yourself, but simultaneously be able to help others while doing it. Like it's not, just stay, you know, and to no knock against anyone still in corporate America. I had a good job. It was actually probably one of the best companies to work for. They were amazing. Um, they asked me to stay three times. Like I quit three times. And they you kept denying think? my, yeah, they kept denying <laughs> my resignation letter. So, it was so, you know, it was very gratifying. Don't get me wrong. Like my ego was stroked. But mm. they also told me when I finally told them, like, guys, no, I am leaving. <laughs> they were like, we admire that you have the courage to lean into what you feel called to do, you know? And mm. I just, it, it's now only been a few months. I've only been, so, you know, self-employed now um, since May. It, we're recording this. I don't know when this will air in August. So it's been a few months. Um, and granted, it's not been crystal clear the entire time. Um, but I love it here and I have no yeah. desire to go back. And if anything, I, I look forward to employing, I have a team of people who help me now, which I'm so grateful for, but I look forward to employing even more individuals, um, and creating a balanced, quote, a balanced <laughs> ease, um, ease full work environment, um, that, that other women and mothers and other individuals, you know, no matter what you identify with, uh, feel comfortable in because um, I think that's so important. You spend most of your time working. So I think it's yeah. important you're working in something that fulfills you. And that could be at a job. Again, I don't knock anyone that has a nine to five. There's great things about that sometimes. Yes. But I also think, I mean, wholeheartedly believe that entrepreneurship could also be a invitation to, to do a lot um on your own terms and can open up it's not for everyone but it's definitely for a lot of individuals who are willing to go there and step out and try yeah and it's so inspiring to see because like thank you for bringing up the fact that the job was good because sometimes we think when we're at a turning point 
things mm. have to be terrible. You have to be right. sick all the time or dreading. You're like, no, things were great, but I wanted to do something else. And that's enough to walk mm. away from something that's safe and steady. doesn't mean it's not scary. You know, giving yourself permission to embrace that dream and that inkling. Girl, and, and I, it's so funny you say that. Because at one point in time, I felt so ungrateful. You know what I mean? We we just gone through this whole pandemic. We're still in it in so many ways. But in the midst of it, I felt so ungrateful. Like, how dare I <laughs> want to do something else when there's people who are like, can I get a paycheck? Like, I'm trying to pay my rent. I'm trying to put food on the table. So here I am, you know, like, but I want to walk away from all of this security, you know, and security is is a very loose word I say because I was also furloughed at my job that was like the worst thing they could have done actually because (laughs) I was furloughed last year um for about two months a little bit over two months and that just unlocked so much for me like that that was such a huge pivotal turning point where if I don't know if, if they had not done that if I would have if I would not have felt compelled to leave, if that makes sense. Like there was already an inkling there, like, oh, there's gotta be something more. And and I think more for me, it was like, oh, you know, maybe I'll try to get promoted, which I actually ended up doing. <laughs> uh, you know, maybe I'll get a different role, which I did within that period of time as yeah. I was trying to figure out things. But um, I don't think I would have been able to step fully into that more had I not been removed from that environment, you know, that quote unquote safety net, that, that comfortable. And when I got furloughed, I cried. Like, I was just like, oh my God, I'm not worthy. Um, you know, obviously I wasn't valued enough to be able, you know, to be asked to stay, you know, and millions, millions of people around the world were being furloughed at this time. And when they called me to go back to work, I was crying my eyes out. I was like, I don't want to go back. (laughs) Oh my God, no. Like it was agonizing to go back. So, and, and I almost forgot that happened. I was like, oh my God. Like, I remember, like, I remember crying when they furloughed me. Like I just felt devastated. My ego was shot. And then I was devastated. They called me to go back. back. You know, sometimes you just need to take a step back because when you're in it, you don't realize, I think we cope when we're in situations and we don't realize, I won't say bad, but you don't realize how you wanted something different until you're out of it. And you're like, yeah, I don't want that anymore. (laughs) No, I absolutely agree with you. And, and I think needing to be removed from, you know, this corporate, I, 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 in so many ways, as a woman of color, you know, I had set out to do, I had succeeded to what I wanted to do. If that makes sense. You know, I went and I I went and um, went to college. I got the corporate job. I moved up, you know, I'm now making six figures. Like I'm doing pretty good. Like this isn't, like I said, it was not a bad situation. They gave me full autonomy to run my projects the way I want to run it. Like as long as it was getting done, like no one was bothering me. (laughs) But inside, inside, like I just felt but still felt so unfulfilled. Like, I'm like, okay, I can do this, but this isn't, this isn't, um, what's the word? It wasn't scaring me. That's one thing that I'm noticing is like, if something scares me, then I probably Mm -hmm. need to run towards that. So I was no longer scared about my job. I was very comfortable. There were things that were annoying. <laughs> you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. And there's there's things annoying in entrepreneurship too. I don't want to make it all roses and like it's amazing. It, it there's moments where it's like, and I don't know if I can curse, but holy shit, what am I doing? Yeah, <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. But but yeah, I, I wasn't being challenged anymore. It was just like, no, you're in this box, this container this is the role. Don't go beyond here unless it's going to help the bottom line. Like we don't need all that to stay right here. And, you know, I just need it. Like I said, I needed something more. And again, there's places where you can get that. Um, yeah. there's, there's companies that will provide that for you. It, it, it all just yeah. depends, but I wasn't able to get that with where I was at because of the state of the business and the industry again. So it wasn't a knock and like I said, the worst thing they could have did was furlough me because once right. I was free, 
and able to just, all I had to think about was my business and my family. Like I, yeah. like you said, was removed, removed from that. It was just like, I finally felt like I could stretch a bit. Like I felt my wings are starting to come out. Like I felt like I was blossoming and my mind was just like in a whole different place. And so the remaining of that year, and when we, you and I met in, in the mastermind we were in together, it was just like this constant, like, I felt like I was trying to get out of that damn box again. Like I finally had these damn wings and they put me, you know, made me put them back in. And it was just like, no, I need to get the fuck out of here. Like I need <laughs> to get out. And when I finally put in my, my notice, which it took me forever to do, it was so overdue. When I finally did, like it was freeing. And that temptation to come back totally was there. Like I, I, oh, yeah. I, it, it, like I said, they asked me to, you know, to stay. They denied. They, they were like, we're not going to accept the person. <laughs> what? Like, Is that a thing? Excuse me? <laughs> Never heard of that. Like, huh? <laughs> and they did that three times. So it literally also down. You, yeah. It also makes you double guess yourself. Like, For am sure. I doing the right thing? Yeah. Like, you know? <laughs> It did. And, and I'm talking to my husband and he has a very much, I'm so thankful because he's so supportive and he just trusts, he trusts me full heartedly to just go. And so, um, granted, you know, this was still a safety net, you know, for our family, we're living a certain type of way, you know what I mean? Because yeah. of this. So he's just like, well, wait, you know, maybe you should look into this. And he's not meaning it from a bad place. Don't get me yeah. wrong. But he's just like, you know, maybe we could make this work. And I'm like, no, I have to go. Like every inch of me, my skin, my gut, everything is just like, no, get the fuck out of here. You have to leave. You have to leave. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's just funny how, you know, things transpire. And then when I left, I, and I'm still kind of reconciling this. I was still in this like corporate hustle mode of like, I gotta just, just go, go, go. Yeah. And at the same time, I was still operating, you know, I'm operating my business this entire time. I, I I'm now in point, now I, I had for three freelancers that I was paying on a continual basis when I left. So I just felt like I got to keep, you know, let's launch, let's go, let's go. And I crashed. Like once I removed that, I, I literally crashed and I, I, I don't want to use the word depression, but I was at a very low, maybe I was depressed. I, I didn't, I, I needed to seek therapy. I probably should have, but I became very cognizant of like, in reflection now over the past few months, I just crashed. And I think it was just because I was so, so used to like doing all the things and my body was just like, no, like you just need to stop. Like, yeah. and I started beating myself up, like all the things I had planned as like the next thing to do now yes. that I was in this fully, I was like, I don't think I want to do any of that. <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> because yeah. I created it from this mindset from this corporate hustle that, that, that even though it was still mine, I was still creating it yeah. from this lens of like, this is what success looks like. Like, this is mm -hmm. how you need to run your business. This is what you need to do. And I'm still shaking that. And I know that's going to take years to shed probably like, I will probably re revert, but I'm trying, I'm in the space of trying to give myself some grace, navigating these uncharted waters and reckon, you know, and still tapping into like, you know, you have the power to decide what this may be, um, yeah. it, whether that be day to day, week to week, month to month, <laughs> sometimes that's just what it is. And yeah, that's exactly um, what it is. <laughs> that's exactly what it is. So, um, it's been, it's, it's been amazing to be in a place to fully express and experiment right now. And, um, you know, knowing that I can land however I need to land, you know what I mean? And, and so much is still unwritten, but I think that's still like the beauty of all of it. Like it makes it somewhat like romantic in a sense, you know what I mean? Like, so yeah. everyone wants like this fairy tale ending, <laughs> but you know, um, and maybe my fairy tale ending was that I, you know, I left my job, Woo! but <laughs> like, we all don't see what like happens after, like, you know, Cinderella got the prince, but then, <laughs> But then, did they even know each other? <laughs> they need Hi. to get to know each other part. And Hi. honestly, yeah. I love the fact you brought it up because it was exactly the same for me. I quit my career mm -hmm. and I had the same mindset that was really? burning me out into my own business because I think when I jumped, 
it felt so liberating, but then there were all those fears that were driving my decision. I had to, I have to make the same amount of money as before. I have to be successful. And every time I would encounter someone who knew me in my like previous life, I felt like I had to come up with like, this is what I'm doing. Like almost like to prove my worth to them. Yes, girl. Yes. I'm right there with you. There were so many stories I had to kind of let go. Are you ready to create space for ease and alignment? I've created a free starter guide to help you go from frazzle to focus. It's a guide for the overwhelmed go-getter who's eager to find more ease, clarity, and alignment in their lives, so you can quiet the noise and strengthen your connection within. After all, we can't align what we don't know is misaligned. Simply grab your free copy at wholeandunleashed.com slash guide. I'm right there with you. There were so many stories I had to kind of let go and... I, it's been four years, <laughs> Valerie, for me, and I'm still realizing, am I pushing right now because mm. I think I should, or am mm. I honoring how I'm doing? And it's, it's about, it's a dance. Mm. Some Ooh. days, <laughs> Ooh. So, <laughs> yeah, some days I love it's that. easier to follow. Other days it's like, I want to do it. I really want to do it. Mm-hmm. No, and I think that See, and this is the stuff like no one told me with entrepreneurship. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like yeah. now people are telling me, they're like, oh no, when you leave, just wait. Like they're like, you're going to feel so great. And I did. I felt really great. And I still do. But then like you yeah. said, some days it's just like, am I operating from a place of fear or this is like not what I am anymore? Does that make sense? Like what, it, you know, am I shedding this or is it because... Or am I, am I running away from this because I'm fear, fearing of like being fully in it and what, what that could be, you know what I mean? The potential of what it could be. And so I've been learning different things to check myself, um, to, I mean, I think a big part of it is just giving myself grace and room to experiment, but then also just to, I know you and I have had discussions about human design and I know you're diving like <laughs> fully into it which I love um and that's been a big that's been so helpful for me um in terms of just understanding myself and where a lot of my stories come from I'm a I'm a manifester a sweet manifester and um trusting my instincts has been very learning to trust myself again has been difficult because again in corporate America um, and even as growing up, it's just, you're told these stories, like, this is what you need to do to be successful. And I used to trust myself so much. And so it's like, where did I lose that? And how do I reconnect to that again? And so Ooh, yes. I'm trying to connect to that again. Like, no, you could, you know, it's already in you. So it's, but it's just like, you know, is it, where is this coming from? Is this coming from that corporate lens? You know, these stories that we've told ourselves, or is this coming, like, is this r- the real Mallory? You know what I mean? Right. Like, is this like, is this true? <laughs> yes, yes. Oh gosh. So like in human design, I'm a, a splenic projector. Nah. Splenic, splenic. So I also doubt myself. Like I override mm-hmm. my intuition all the time mm-hmm. and I, I've always mm-hmm. trusted myself but for big life decisions even mm-hmm. though I know it's right for me mm-hmm. I felt like I had to explain it to others and that's when I doubt myself and that's when I like oh. you know override my reasoning mm-hmm. like yeah I should do this and I was like oh, but should I though what are the pros <laughs> what are the cons like is there any like ROI guarantee <laughs> yeah, <laughs> make yeah. sure that you're investing in this program and And it's like such a huge mindset transformation Mm. into, like you said, entrepreneurship is a journey, but like no one told us what the journey is about because it's so different. But it's kind of like going inwards and like pulling all the weeds out. And there are so many of them. Girl, so many of them, so many of them. And some of them have like pretty flowers and it's like you get distracted by them. Yes, yes. (laughs) Yes, yeah, pretty. I love that analogy. <laughs> Maybe we should keep this one. And meanwhile, it's like this fucking you dry. <laughs> this me benefits. So I mean, the yeah. word sounds good. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, no, it, it's 
like I said, I never realized it was going to be this journey of self-awareness and spirituality, but that's exactly what it's become. It's yeah. like, who am I? Who, who, what happened? But I love, like I said, I love it here. And I'm, I think it was special and such an honor and a privilege to be able to be in, you know, be able to make money while figuring myself out. Like I, I'm yes. like, how did I get so lucky, you know, be able to, to do these things. And I just want that for everyone else. Like, I hope, you know, life is this huge journey. And, um, I think so much of, so many of us, again, are told, you know, to fit in these boxes and these stories that we tell ourselves and these roles that we're, we're assigned and shedding yourself of all of that. It's just such, it's work, you know, <laughs> like, and then for me, <laughs> I feel it's just really necessary for me to go through this type of work. Um, I call it heart work. And I took that from a client of mine. I absolutely love her, but I feel like it's heart work um, from the heart and it's hard work. <laughs> but I feel like yeah. it's so necessary, especially because of my daughter, because I look at her, she's like the most confident person I know. And I love that. And I'm like, I don't want her to lose that. Like, I feel like that's innately who she is. And since her birth, I've been told she has such a sense of self, like the doctors told us. I mean, it was just really weird. And I'm just like, I really don't, I don't want to lose that. I want to continue to nurture that. And I feel like the best way for, at least for me is on my role, my husband, my husband has a very strong sense of self. I actually admire that, but he's also going through, we're all changing, but I, I feel the best way for me to help her is to help myself. You know what I mean? Like I've got to go in deep on myself so then when I am parenting when I am having a moment um you know I'm not projecting onto her or you know and not even noticing it like I'll give you an example something that I've shared with a few others I was I hormonally I started breaking out because of stress and just <laughs> all the things after um I left my job and um actually it was around the time when I put my notice in. And so it was just like reconciling, like, is this the best decision? You know what I mean? Am I, right. is, am I going the right direction? So I started breaking out and I started picking at my face. It's just, <clears throat> excuse me, those, 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 those in, um, insecure teenage tendencies just like came back and here I am, I'm 36. <laughs> so I'm in the mirror, like picking my pimples. Sorry if that sounds gross to anybody. And my daughter's watching me do this. Lucky is watching me do this. And she's like, mama, you hurt yourself? You hurt? And I'm like, no, I got something on my face. She's like, oh, I have something on my face too. And I'm like, oh shit. <laughs> like I'm she's teaching her. You. <laughs> I see me pick myself apart over like something that's just happy. You know, obviously internally it's manifesting physically. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm not, I'm literally imprinting in her mind right now that like if you have a pimple you gotta pick it and something's wrong you're hurt so you gotta fix it and it's just like okay we gotta we gotta go about this a different way because I don't want her to feel insecure because she obviously can see me in an insecure moment like it was just like this eye-opening experience wow. like she's constantly watching and just like <laughs> receiving like I'm not even doing anything direct she's just learning how to operate and and navigate herself through me and it's just like oh my gosh this is a huge responsibility no yeah. pressure yeah. <laughs> you should do a set man like le life lessons with lucky <laughs> right oh my god I yeah. totally do that <laughs> Oh I love gosh. like I really love how you talk about like the super vulnerable and the scary parts because we think hey we're finally following our dreams and things are mm -hmm. rainbows and butterflies no there is an ugly part you're also shedding the parts of yourself that you try to fit or maybe you had to fit in that period and now it's time to kind of become something else and it gets yeah. really really scary and a thing that you also mentioned that's like you know you wanted to do all those things and that was where I was as well. I wanted to do and accomplish that. I didn't even let my body kind of mm. calibrate with me because yes. we are changing, right? Not just mm -hmm. your mind, your body is changing with you. But if you don't give it time to process, then 
it ain't, it ain't happening. <laughs> no. And your body will slow you down. Your body will. I, I read a book recently. I have to, sh- I, I keep mentioning this book. Well, I listen to it. I listen to audio books now because as a mom, it's hard to sit down, but I'm working on that sitting down <laughs> and reading a book. But Oprah has this book about, it's like the path of purpose or something to that. I'll have to get you the right name. And it has snippets from her super soul Sundays. One of the chapters is called about learning to get to your purpose or op- living in your purpose is called the whispers. And it talks about how our body whispers to us, um, you, you know, when we're in alignment or we're not aligned. And so I'm so used to just like being like, like ah, frazzled, but exactly what you mentioned coming out, you know, coming shedding that corporate role and now being fully in entrepreneurship, I did not allow my body to recalibrate. Like, hold on, wait a second. Like we're in a new place. <laughs> let's kind of ease into this. I was like, let's go, come on. And um, I think that manifested in so many different ways. Like at one point a lot, during this month, actually, and it's gone out, but I had this and I have thyroid issues as well. I have hyperthyroidism. So I had this insane rash just show up on my arms. And I'm like, what is this? And I was like, body whispering to me. <laughs> yes, <laughs> like, body's <laughs> shouting. <laughs> yes, it's shouting at this point. Like, oh, you thought acne was bad. Just wait, oh, we're going to make your arms itch. And so I had like these patches of scales all on my arms, girl. I still have like a little, little few remnants I can see. And it started really light, like very small, yeah. like a little, little dot. And it just showed up. And and I'm like, I didn't change anything. Like I'm not doing anything different. It took account of my food, you know, took account of the, the det- detergent or whatever, you know, re- literally yeah, like yeah. what's different. And it just kept growing. Like it started up on my upper arms and it just started growing. And I was like, I need to re- like, I just need to slow down. And it really stopped me in, in my tracks and it, I know that doesn't happen for everyone. Like I, I in a lot of ways, Girl, maybe it unfortunate. Happened to me. It really? Happened to me, like right before really? the mastermind last year and I had quit my job for three years mm-hmm. and I was still not doing the things I wanted to do because I was <sighs> terrified. I didn't mm-hmm. think I was enough. And mm-hmm. then I had, I've never had like eczema before like that I was aware of. And then my hands, right. it started small and then it just blew and it was covered. Like my entire hands, I was kind of, like basically disabled I couldn't grab anything my husband had to wash my hair it was like completely broken and then I'm like I think my body is trying to tell me something (laughs) I think I've been in denial because I kept saying oh well I'm freelancing I like design I'm making good money maybe this is it's okay I get to travel and then you know the pandemic hit and everything and and it's almost like okay confront what you haven't been confronting Mm. because though you were believing the stories that you're mm. trying to coach people out of it, but you mm-hmm. were stuck in them yourself. Wow. Damn. Well, first of all, thank you for sharing that because I felt so alone. And I'm like, <laughs> my husband's just like, you need to go to the doctor and right now with, with COVID, trying to get to the doctor is so hard. And I, I called my dermatologist. They're like, we can't see you for two months. I'm like, two months? Like, I might have to deal with this for two months. I call a teledoc and he's like, I don't know. I'm going to send you the steroid cream. Maybe that will help. Yeah. And I, I do have an allergist that I have high allergies, but it wasn't all over my body. So I knew it wasn't an allergic reaction to anything. It was just like, mm-hmm. why is it only on my arms? And it started spreading my hand, kind of got a little bit on my chest. But anyways. He, he was like, oh, that's your thyroid. Your thyroid's all out of whack. Like that's, and he knew exactly. He was like, that's your thyroid. Like you have hyperthyroidism. Your thyroid's trying to tell you something right now. You're, and he knew how I just became come an entrepreneur. I mean, I was, it was really, yeah. he's a great doctor. And he was just <laughs> like, oh, well, how are you doing? You're stressed, aren't you? That's what that all is. That's what that's all is. And, and once doctor. I recognized it, I know once I recognized it, it started going away. And I was so worried I was just like, how, you know, what am I going to do if this doesn't go away? Like, or if I got to wait two months and deal with this, it's just itching. It'll wake me up in the middle of the night. But, um, thank you for sharing that because I, I thought I was just a crazy person, but I'm like, no, this has to be 
my body's trying to tell me something. It's telling, you know, you need to, like you said, confront the things that you've been, you know, um, depressing into your body, you know, regressing in so many ways and you need to confront them. Um, and I'm working on that. <laughs> Cause I'm like, we, I don't want to do that again. Like, I do yeah. not want those things. To pop. No thanks. <laughs> I live in Las Vegas. It's hot and wearing sleeves is oh, not so fun. It's gonna get even worse. Yeah. Yeah, and it would rub. So I was like, I have to. I, and people would see it. Like, if I was on yes. a Zoom call or I'm like, people are just gonna have to see it. So now it's something I have to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I totally get you. And it becomes such a self-conscious thing. Mm. Like for me, it was such a, also like a mental struggle. Yes. yes. I'm like, I'm in quotation. I was doing everything right. Like, what the hell do you mm. want from me? Like why mm -hmm. right now? But then it was also for me when I was able to like understand why. Yeah. And be okay. It, it took me almost a year to recover. I still had little things mm. I had to cut off like all kinds of food detergents wow. and all that just to help my body heal even though they wow. weren't the cause of it I had to shut realize things. my body yeah. exactly and that my body mm. needed to heal so mm -hmm. I've been I think the mastermind has been so transformative mindset wise mm. Mm. and just understanding like yeah your business is yours what is important for you right now is it making five figures or your health at this point right oh my gosh absolutely I absolutely agree and we just get so we get so caught up again in those markers of what we think success is you know what I mean mm -hmm. like for me I was like I need to make seven figures that's what I need to do and it's just like but why like why do I need to make seven like what are you gonna do when you make those seven figures like what I'm is gonna so boast about it <laughs> right yeah like what, what, where, where is this coming from? And I realized I made goals. Like I said, I made goals and benchmarks, programs, all types of things, content off of this lens of like, this is, the, you know, the success that I want, but really none of it was in alignment. None of it was genuine. Let's just be honest. Um, I thought it was, but it was all under the guise of this again, in my opinion, corporate hustle mentality. Like this is, this is what success looks like, you know, and, and success is different for everyone. You know what I mean? Like some people are happy, you know, at, at a five figure mark or whatever. And, and if that provides you peace and that gives you the things, the things you want in life and the freedom in your life, that's great. Like, Maybe that's all you need and that's okay. <laughs> you, you might not need all of that. <laughs> Amen to that. Yeah. Because I think we start striving for things and like, you know, you, you're in social media. So, you know, some advice on how to deal with the comparison and also like it oh. could be such a wonderful source of inspiration, but then it's yes. also so easy to get sucked in. And I've talked to so many people who are really struggling, like for you, how has that relationship been? Because I know it started as a means to connect for you. Absolutely. And it still is. I, every time I show up, every time I post something, I always think what's in it for them. Like I, I, and, and I always create from a place of fun and enjoyment. And like, I, I feel excited with whatever content I create, whether it's a, a quote or a video or whatever it is, I feel excited when I create that, but I always have to think, and it's, it's like a, it's a check or a, um, um, I can't forget the words out, but I check myself and I say, is this going to provide my audience value today? That's, you know, is this performative? Is this just self-serving, you know, and if it, if it doesn't fit, you know, how it provides value for them, I'm not going to post it like erase, come back to it, revisit it, just get rid of it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but in terms of that comparison piece, it's, it's something my clients, feel very often. Um, I, I serve a lot of entrepreneurs. I'm so thankful that they they trust me to help them. But we spend so much time on that mindset piece. Like, 
breaking down that cycle of like, well, they're doing it this way. I need to do it this way. Or they're doing these numbers. I need to be doing these numbers Mm -hmm. or they're doing real. So I got to do reals. or they're doing this. So I got to do this. And it's just like, no, 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 stop, stop. Let's talk about the things that you want to do. Let's talk about the message you want to share. Let's talk about the services you, you want to provide and how that provides value to the audience you want to serve. Like it always has to go back. I think it's so important that you show up doing what you love to do, you know? So if you love being on camera and talking to people, stories is a great way to experiment or doing reels or doing IGTVs. I'm speaking specifically about Instagram because I think when people, what I found when people talk about social media, Instagram is like the default and there's so many other platforms out there. And I actually suggest you show up on other platforms if you have the capacity um, and the tools to repurpose your content. That's a whole other conversation. But Instagram is a great place for inspiration, but it's a great place for comparison. And it's so easy to compare um, because it's just, you're getting hit with a plethora of messages, curated messages, you know what I mean? Intentionally curated messages. And I'm one of those people who do that. Like I intentionally curate things to look and feel a certain way in hopes of a certain um, reaction, you know what I mean? And Mm -hmm. it's carefully crafted. And I'm very honest about that. Um, I show up speaking and intentionally to to someone that I want to connect with. And people have to just be aware of when they're consuming this content, like, hold on, like, this person is trying to attract me in a certain way. You know what I mean? Whether it be being entertained, you know, there's comedians, so they're trying to get you to laugh, you know, but Mm -hmm. we got to be careful, especially with as entrepreneurs, in my opinion. Um, and even influencers, because I help a lot of influencers who are like, well, she's doing it this way, or they're doing it this way. I need to be doing all these things. It's like, well, where is this coming from? Like, is it because you genuinely want to do these things and it's going to serve your community? Um, or is it because you feel like you should, you know, the shoulds, Are are you telling yourself the story (laughs) that you have to do it this way? Like, and I was, I've been there when I first started in this coaching world. Um, that's exactly, I I was, I'm now recognizing I was taught such a masculine way of operating in social media. And I'm now rekindling into this feminine flowy sometimes, and, and not to knock being a woman, but uh, masculine is, you know, has the processes and the boundaries and the checkpoints and the milestones. And it's very, to me, aligned to that corporate mentality, um, which is just for me aligned to masculinity and there's power in that. And it, and it could be very helpful, but I feel like the femininity, um, is fun. It's free and it's flows. You might not know what you're going to get and how it might land and let's play. Like that to me is what femininity is. And so I'm in a place of like, I need to probably be more in my femininity because I mastered the masculine thing, but <laughs> using the, the masculinity as like a strategy, you know, not to say mm-hmm. like F it, but using it as, as a, a means to strengthen my femininity, you know what I mean? And put those boundaries in place. So it's not taken advantage of, um, that it, you know, it lands where it needs to land, if that makes sense. I went down a whole tangent. I'm sorry, but I think people, to answer your original question, people just have to be very careful with what they consume and put some boundaries in place. You know, um, one thing that I tell a lot of my clients is that, you know, set time to do research and then set time to have fun. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So set a time when you're doing research, set a timer. Let it be 15 minutes. Let it be a half hour. I think that's like a good mark. And you're doing intentional research on like who your audience might be, or maybe doing research on other, and there's nothing wrong with looking at other accounts. I actually suggest it, see how other people are serving and then figure out how to put your own little twist on it. You know what I mean? And see what clicks for you. Like, Ooh, I, I, Oh, I really want to do that. Not like, Oh, well, he's doing that. I got to do that. No, 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 no. Like let's switch it up on. Oh no, that looks so much fun. Like I got to do my own version of that. You know what I mean? And it's not that you're copying. You're, I, there's a book that I, I um, share with a lot of people called Still Like an Artist. And the premise behind is that there are no original ideas. Ideas flow through people. 
and people just put their own remixes on it. And I believe that. So, um, you, you know, you're not still, you're not copy and pasting. Don't do that. Definitely don't do that. Put your own little thing on it, your little flavor, um, and have fun with it and experiment, see where it lands. And then if it works, double down keep doing it. Um, and then don't be afraid to keep experimenting, like to keep switching it up. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, the biggest thing that I always tell people is you just got to show up. Like you've got to put yourself out there consistently. Um, so people look forward to your content because if they're not consuming your content, they're consuming someone else's and out of sight, out of mind. So these platforms are a tool to build community. You know what I mean? And if you're always approaching it from that way, um, that it's a tool to build community, you know, those two, those two pieces, you, in my mind, I think you can maintain a healthier relationship. That doesn't mean it doesn't still creep up, but then you can check yourself, like, hold on, where is this really coming from? Like, am I coming from the intention as this is a tool to help my community or is it, I should do this because someone else is doing it. Yeah. Ooh. Thank you so much for pointing out that it's all created, but with intention, because mm-hmm. that doesn't mean it's fake. fake. No, there's no. like this misunderstanding mm. that social media is all created. So it's fake, but no, you can like, everybody is always communicating, selling, yes. attracting. And if you're yes. doing something that you really believe in, why not use your voice in a platform yes. that you enjoy? There's nothing yeah. wrong with create, be intentional. So I love your message about, yeah, you know, just be very intentional. How is it serving the people? What is my intention? Of course, I want sales call or maybe I want people to sign up, but also, you know, if it doesn't attract the right people, that's okay. And it's mm-hmm. such a healthier way to view social media as opposed to this giant that, you know, keeps sucking and it's comparison because just like a fork, it can help you, you know, feed your food. You can also stuff someone with it. <laughs> No. <laughs> yeah, you're right. I love that. I love that example because you're absolutely right. It really, and then to me, that's where that tool piece comes in. Like this is a marketing platform, you know what I mean? But to me, the great, and, and I do lean on Instagram. I love Instagram. I have a love hate relationship with it. Sometimes I'm like, all right, algorithm, but, um, but there's still, there's, there's still power in the algorithm. Um, but I, but I think Instagram has been so successful because it is a community and I know they tend to, you know, hop on, a, you know, they, they, they copied stories from Snapchat. Let's just be honest. You know, they copied <laughs> reels from TikTok, but they continue to be successful because I think they always continue to nurture community. They allow conversations to happen and cross, um, uh, cross promotion, if that makes sense. Like they, you know, doing the lives allows you to collaborate. Um, Mm -hmm. Having these, you know, DM groups allows you to collaborate with individuals. Um, The fact that you can write long captions, you can't do that on TikTok, you can't do that on Snap. So now people have like their own mini blogs on Instagram and I'm not knocking them. Um, I mean, you gotta be careful because you don't own any of that Um, Instagram. You're using a free platform. It's free for a reason, (laughs) okay, you're giving (laughs) away. But, but, um, no, it, it becomes this incredible tool, like I said, to connect and to test and to experiment and to play. Um, and that has the ability to convert to, to monetize. And so, um, and there's nothing wrong with that. Like that, that's not, it's not a bad thing to want to make money, you know, from a community you want to foster from your content. Like, I don't think there's anything wrong with that marketing uh companies have been doing that forever for other you know other service providers and products i mean coca-cola walmart before all this stuff existed billboards which are still prevalent but billboards magazines and all these things they ran they had ads tv ads like this is just another this is a again a free way to tap into your audience because they're there there's billions of people on these platforms and there is literally an audience for everyone, which isn't just another thing I love. And these social media platforms allow you to connect to them. Like just type in anything you're interested in, Google it, YouTube it, TikTok, hash, the hashtag, and you can find your people. I love that. That's amazing. It's a powerful thing. 
It is. It is. And like the having the fun part, I can tell mm. like every time I see Mallory's reels or posts, it, it is content, it's informational, but it's fun. <laughs> like that energy is contagious. Like you can tell when someone forced a post mm. and you can tell when someone yes. is doing it because they enjoy it. Like energy does not lie. I agree. And I tell my clients that all the time. They're just like, I'm in this funk, you know, blah, blah, blah. I haven't posted. And I'm like, don't, don't. Like I really genuinely, some of, so many people think they're not creative. And I think that if you're creating content, you're creative. Like you, you, you may not be an artist. There's artists who are creating content. Don't get me wrong. But if you're creating content, I really feel like you're a creative person because um, there's energy behind that. You know what I mean? And if that energy is off, people can see it. And I've been there. I've done that posting for the sake of posting. And it's just like, Same no, <laughs> don't do that. Cause it, it, that energy from that, that place of, you know, scarcity or insecure or, or unsure or whatever it might be that you're going through at that moment that ends up, um, showing granted, granted, I do think that there's still value in sharing that, you know, depending on what your message is and what, you know, the connection you're trying to build. Um, and in hindsight, that's a lot of where my content came from. And I just, honestly, I was in a, when I stopped talking about my infertility journey, I still talk about it here and there, but it's not intentional by any means anymore, uh, or in the forefront, but I was coming from a place of like, I just want people to know they're not alone. You know what I mean? Like I'm in this with you, like I, I I'm going there with you. But then I also got in a place where it's just like, you know, my life is very abundant and I'm happy. And so my content started shifting to show some of that. And people was just like, you know, I miss you talking about your struggle with your breastfeeding journey or, you know, infertility. I'm just like, I'm not in a place where that's taking all of me. And so this is the content you're going to get yes. and not yes. being afraid of shifting. Like, and, and also again, not being afraid to shift when you are in places of doubt that still may help. And you could still post that without being yeah. like, I'm just emotionally dumping on you. It could still be a place of inspiration, like, and, and community, if that makes sense. Mm. Um, oh. Yeah. I just, you hit on such a, like a point where, you know, you become this, this persona and mm. people are attaching and projecting their own stories mm. to you. And mm. I love it because I've seen people who have outgrown whatever they started sharing. Like there was this account I follow where this person was talking about chronic illness all the time. Mm. And then they started to heal and move away from there. And then suddenly that narrative wasn't fitting the followers. So they were losing. Yeah. Followers. And they're like, but you know, I can't talk about this forever. At least for me in this stage, I feel like I'm somewhere else. You're welcome to stay. Yeah. And if you want to tag along, it's it's fine. If you want to leave, that's perfectly fine. But I love that you talk about the narratives that people attach with you. And it almost becomes another box when it's never meant to be a box. Oh my God. You're so right. Oh my gosh. You're exactly right. And I think that we just have to recognize as humans, our superpower is to change our minds. Like that's really, in my opinion, what makes, you know, our ability to love something and that shifts, you know what I mean? Our ability to be passionate about something you no longer are like, and, and being cognizant of that shift, you know, and we, we bought, we, we tear down people when they change their mind, you know what I mean? Yeah. And it's just like, that's our superpower. Like animals, we still are animals. We still have instinct, but we have this layer of rationalization and love, you know, and why not exercise it? <laughs> yeah, we're multidimensional. Like, you know, yeah. we are allowed to fit any roles. I thank you for bringing that up. What are yeah. some myths that your clients have when they come to you to start using Instagram? Um, that they need a lot of followers to make money that they need a lot of followers. It's always like followers is always like, I need this. I need people. People need to come. And, <laughs> and it's just like, hold on. Like you probably already have a community and don't even realize it. Let's tap into what you got. You know, let's take a look at your sphere of influence already around you. Even that's not necessarily even on Instagram yet. And then let's even talk about 
how you can own some of this and nurture people beyond just an Instagram post. So, you know, helping them set up their newsletters and, and really providing value with that, where it's just not like, you know, I have a new blog post, like where people really look forward um, to them showing up in their inbox. Um, but then also building something for the long term that they're going to feel excited continuously doing. That's a big thing. Um, and also recognizing that it might shift, you know, kind of tapping back into what we we're just talking about that giving them room, giving them room to honor that, like, I'm not that person anymore. And now I'm shifting into this. So yeah, what the biggest myth is that they get so caught up on like this quantity and I've been there. That's how actually I started. I was like, I need all these followers so I could get that swipe up and I could get brands, more followers, brands are going to pay me more, blah, blah. Like it was all, all numbers. And damn, I just had like an aha moment. That's like how I approached entrepreneurship. Like I got to hit seven figures. Like it was always That's these numbers say. thing. Right. Yeah. And just rec making them recognize like there's so much, like the numbers, granted they're real. They don't lie. You know, data is very helpful and having um, goals I think is important, but those goals don't have to necessarily be quantified. Ooh, sorry. Okay. Those goals don't necessarily have to be quantified, you know, quantity or quanti quantifiable. I don't know if that's word, quantifiable, messing up my words today, but they don't have to be a number. They could be, you know, they could be a feeling. And to me, I'm quality over quantity any day. So a lot of it is tearing down again, this narrative, like I got to have all these numbers and recognizing, you know, there's so much more there than that. Like you could actually um accomplish so much more with less so nice what about pitching i know you also share about shipping, uh, yeah pitching and sometimes it's a hit or miss for people but how was your approach to start doing that um honestly it's very similar to even with you know starting out on social media just putting yourself out there and not being afraid to knock on a big brand store and say like, Hey, the biggest thing. And I, honestly, this is all what my course is about. And so I'm just, I, I have no problem sharing it, but you're not going to have the, you know, the whole framework, but honestly, it's about leaning from value. Like with pitching, it's the same thing. And you have to think what's in it for the brand. Like, what am I for putting on the table where it's an easy yes, not a, a handout. Like, hey, just come pay me. You, you just, you, you want me. You know what I mean? Yeah. And recognizing like you've got to build a relationship. You've got to nurture it. And um, it, again, and again, just not being afraid to shoot your shot. Like it, it's almost like, um, um, I mean, asking someone out in a sense. And so when you ask someone out, you don't just hit them with a kiss right away. You know, it's like- <laughs> yeah hey, I'm feeling you, you fill in me. And I think I'm bringing something to the table. You know what I mean? So um, I, I always, a lot of people just think, oh, I'm not good enough. Um, they think that, you know, I'm not big enough or I'm not ready. You know, when I do this, then I'll pitch. And it's usually, usually you're ready. You're already ready. You already have something to offer. You already have value. It's just, knowing how to articulate that with confidence and then also recognizing you're going to get a lot, a lot of no's before you get those yeses, but those yeses, um, honestly become, at least for me, those became like anchors, like, Oh crap, let's keep going. I'm going to keep, let's send more pitches. Like, Oh, nope, that's cool. Nope. nope ah, you liked me. Like, let's do this. Yeah. Let's talk. <laughs> and so, and, and just for me learning how to pitch, I learned how to sell. Like I used to be like, oh, I hate sales. Nope, I'm not a sales person. But I recognized as I started putting myself out there, I learned how to sell. And so by a byproduct, in my opinion, from pitching and putting yourself out there is that you learn how to sell, but you sell with heart. You know, it's yeah. not like this, like salesy, like, yeah, it's like that cringy. Yeah. <laughs> like the infomercials. <laughs> Does oh my this happen to you? <laughs> Yeah. Like, yeah, that whole thing. Oh gosh. Yeah. So yeah, I, I think pitching honestly is, a, is very reflective of just, you know, putting yourself out there, but then also having confidence that that confidence piece I think is so is important and that can build over time. 
that you have something of value to provide this brand or this entity that you might want to collaborate with, you know, so. Yeah. Thank you for so many wonderful tips. I You're want to ask welcome. You one last question. Yeah. <laughs> how do you make sure, like, before you reach out to your brand, how do you make sure that it's aligned to you? Because just like dating, mm. not mm. everyone is a suitor. It might seem like yes. a good idea, but you know, for you personally, what are your requirements? For me, it go always goes back to how this can serve my audience for me personally. Um, but you can also have that barometer as well. You know, how is this going to serve my life or, you know, how is this going to, you know, does this make sense? And if it's not an easy, yes, usually it's probably a no. <laughs> I'm be, I'm yeah. just being honest. This is the, this is the whole yeah. trust yourself thing. <laughs> that whole exercise, you know, bring it in full circle. Um, and so for like, I I'm now thankfully at a point I don't pitch very often. I used to pitch. I I pitch in a whole different way. I usually don't pitch a lot of my brand collaborations anymore. Full transparency, um, because that's just the place that I like to operate from. I have I have a brand manager now who handles all of that for me. But I know what she's doing because I've done it myself. So mm -hmm. I. By the way, if you outsource something, I do recommend you try it for a little bit before you hand it off so you understand some of it. So there's a lesson there. But I have a lot of brands approach me now and her and I are in a great place. She knows what's a line and what's not. Um, but so every so often she'll actually, you interested in this? I'm like, mm -mm, this is not a line. Like there's not, it's not there. Like this is not, this doesn't serve me. This doesn't serve my audience. It's just, it's not aligned. And there was a point in time where I would just say yes to everything for the money. And again, even from this whole conversation, if it's about the numbers of the money, it probably is not genuine and authentic and true. It has to be bigger than that. So I now partner with brands, again, that I know that's going to serve my audience and that my audience will find interesting or know and know that their service would be helpful to them, whether it's food or, you know, his skincare, hair care, whatever it might be, it has to be, how does this serve my audience? And I got to like it too. Like, I can't yes. just, I'm not going to just put out something that I have no clue about. So, you know, give me some time to try it, you know, no, I'm not just gonna do that. Like, that's just not, that's not it. Or I, or in it, then if I don't believe in their intentions behind what they're trying to share or their service or their message, it's, it, it's an easy no, like, no, thank you, but no thanks. So um, I've ended partnerships and, and, and what I realized also is, you know, while I've said no to this money, I've said yes to so many other possibilities. And so being confident in that, that this still opens me up to receive so many other things and to do other things. Yes. Oh, thank you for your wisdom. I could, I could ask about you all day, but Aww. I'm conscious of your time. Thank you. I'm excited to ask you some rapid fire questions. Yeah, okay. let's do it. <laughs> What's the best compliment you've ever received? Oh, um, that I am authentic because sometimes I get so in my head, like, again, from that corporate world, if that makes sense. So to be told that to be, to be seen fully, if that makes sense, like, I just feel like you're so real. And I'm like, Oh, wow. And, and, um, that, that is just confirmation that I'm operating, you know, in fully in myself, if that makes sense. So mm -hmm. that's probably the best compliment. And, and I try to lead live by that if that makes sense like I try to I, I my love language is words of affirmation so it's just like how can I continue to live and lead that way so and honestly being scared about something tends to land me there each time does that make sense yes and yeah. such a great example of alignment like what you just shared about mm -hmm. Instagram and brands being aligned, mm -hmm. that is an example of the feminine and masculine energy mm -hmm. coming together. Boundaries when something doesn't work, and then also like allowing things to happen. You summed it all up. Thank you, but you did it too. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> A book that's changed your life. Ooh, 
we should all be millionaires by rachel rogers damn she had me like girl changed my life and as a woman of color it's just very rachel's amazing and she's like you're she actually has like a very calm even tone i I listen to the audiobook but she is like no we all need to get this like we all need to do this and I'm gonna li- I'm gonna listen to it again. I've actually listened to a few chapters here and there again, but um, and it just came out this year. But I'm getting chills thinking about it. She is like, I don't even want to call it a hype woman, but she's just like, uh, get off your ass, let's do this, let's go. We need to do this, not just for you, but for everybody. And um, she just has so many um, profound nuggets in it that would just make you want to live your life fully. Mm-hmm. So. I love it. It's moving up my list now, <laughs> my ever growing yeah. list. <laughs> yeah, listen to it. I write. <laughs> <laughs> what does coming home to yourself mean to you? <sighs> you know, it, it's definitely a feeling of like ease and peace, but excitement, like that fun energy. Um, fun can be fleety though. So I, I lean on peace and ease like where it's just flowing. Um, So home for me, you know, coming into a place of home is coming to a place of flow. And that pops up in a lot of different places in my life. So whether having a moment playing with Lucky, um, whether having a moment joking around with my husband, or even when I'm working on creating content or stuff for my clients where I'm just like in it and I look up and I'm like oh crap it's two in the morning and I've just been like pouring into it um home to me feels like flow where it's just like I lose track of the time and it just feels so damn good like butter (laughs) (laughs) what would you like more of Mm, more flow honestly um I, I am, I'm practicing ways to get into that without it necessarily always being about pleasure. I, I feel like I need to tap into how do I find flow in the mundane, if that makes sense, and the peace, the peace in the mundane, um, and not always looking for moments of pleasure, I'm going down a whole other rabbit hole at this point. So um, yeah, but I want more flow in my life and flow doesn't always need to be beautiful and pretty you know it so learning that learning that and trying to practice that Mm, advice for younger self or words anything you don't have to have it all figured out yeah I I wanted I was such a know-it-all when I was younger like I needed to grow up and, and and have it all together but you don't have to have it all figured out and play more yeah play and make mistakes well I also want to share some of your programs and offerings because I'm sure a lot of people listening (laughs) want (laughs) to work with you or want to know more about you (laughs) yeah currently offering yeah so right now um I am taking on one-on-one clients um I I have a, a number of ways to work together but from coffee chats to working on a one for a number of months. So we can, you know, if, if you're really struggling with social media, that's really my jam. And I love helping individuals do that. Um, especially if you're looking to create a strategy with intention and with heart. And so, um, yes, if you're needing help with like having that all laid out and just can't seem to do it on your own, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, getting help can actually be a huge strength. And I help individuals create what I call a social media roadmap. This is my project manager hat. (laughs) And we basically project plan your social media strategy where it's aligned to who you really are and the value you want to provide to your audience. Um, That's like for a whole social media strategy, including blogging, podcasts, YouTube, or whatever, and other um, platforms. But say you just want to start with Instagram, like, let's just start here and then grow. I actually do the same thing and I'm offering Instagram makeovers. It's my VIP offer. Um, so if you're just looking to do that for just Instagram, I love to help you. Um, and honestly, it's a great 
way to, you can use a lot of the practices that we build within the Instagram makeover to attribute to other platforms. Um, but with that, I help people with creating a personalized content calendar. Um, I provide them personalized prompts to use. So like you literally have like a whole toolkit um, to move forward on your whole Instagram strategy. And I also provide um, some support during that time to help you implement um, so that it, it feels aligned and right on point. So, yeah. yeah. And I'm sure you'll be doing some hard work along the side. Mallory is really good at holding space. <laughs> Thank you. You know, honestly, I find that's a big part of this work. And I'm full transparency. I'm feeling really called to step more into that. Um, I think it's, I think, again, social media is a great tool, but I really feel in this place where I need to dip further into, into the hard work. Um, yeah. so stay tuned for some things like that. I'm still figuring that piece out, what that looks like. <laughs> well, where can we find you? Where can we get the latest deets from you? Yeah. Livebytemj.com, um, as well on Instagram, Twitter, all the places, Pinterest, I've got life by MJ on deck and you can follow me anywhere. Um, TikTok, all the things, um, primarily Instagram, my website though, is where you can find me. Oh, amazing. I'll also add it in the show notes so people can just click through. Thank you Thank so you. much for sharing your story, your passion, and amazing wisdom to help us manage social media and life better. <laughs> Thank you. I really, really appreciate you just, you know, sharing your space and, you know, sharing your, your audience. So I, I really appreciate it. Thank you. I hope this was a value to someone today. I'm sure it was. Thank you, Mallory. No problem. Thank you so much for listening to the Whole and Unleashed podcast. What was your takeaway from today's conversation? Let me know in the comments or review. I would love to hear from you. Subscribe to get new episodes each week and visit wholeandunleashed.com for more information.